On April 23, 1975, President Gerald R. Ford was scheduled to give the keynote address at the Tulane University Convocation in New Orleans. As the president took the stage, more than 100,000 North Vietnamese troops were massing on the outskirts of Saigon, having overrun almost all of South Vietnam in just three months. Thirty years after the United States first became involved in Southeast Asia, ten years after the Marines had landed in Da Nang, the ill-fated country for which more than 58,000 Americans had died was on the verge of defeat. We, of course, are saddened indeed by the tragic events in Indochina, the president said. He reminded the subdued crowd that 160 years earlier, America had recovered from another conflict in which she had suffered humiliation and a measure of defeat, the War of 1812, and promised that the nation would once again regain the sense of pride that existed before Vietnam. But he continued to thunderous applause it cannot be achieved by refighting a war that is finished as far as America is concerned. The time had come, the president said, to unify, to bind up the nation's wounds and begin a great national reconciliation. Just seven days later, North Vietnamese soldiers stormed the gates of the presidential palace in Saigon and raised the communist flag. The Vietnam War was over. It's been more than 40 years now, and despite President Ford's optimism, we have been unable to put that war behind us. The deep wounds it inflicted on our nation, our communities, our families, and our politics have festered. As Army veteran Phil Joya said in an interview for our documentary series, the Vietnam War drove a stake right into the heart of America. It polarized the country as it had probably never been polarized since before the Civil War, and we've never recovered. Nearly ten years ago, as we were completing post-production on a seven-part series about the American experience in World War II, we resolved to turn our attention to the painful, bitter, confounding, and much misunderstood tragedy that was the war in Vietnam. It has been our privilege throughout this undertaking to collaborate with the writer Jeffrey C. Ward and our producer Sarah Botstein, along with our team of editors, researchers, and co-producers. We were also ably assisted by an invaluable board of advisors, historical consultants, and veterans of the war who saved us from innumerable mistakes, but more important, pointed us to the critical moments and astonishing contradictions that haunt any serious study of the Vietnam War. From the start, we vowed to each other that we would avoid the limits of a binary political perspective and the shortcuts of conventional wisdom and superficial history. This was a war of many perspectives, a Rashomon of equally plausible stories, of secrets, lies, and distortions at every turn. We wished to try to contain and faithfully reflect those seemingly irreconcilable outlooks. We were interested in trying to understand the colonial experience of the French and the way it eerily prefigured what would befall the United States in subsequent years. We wanted to find out what actually happened in the halls of power in Washington, Saigon, and Hanoi, and to get to know the leaders who made the decisions that determined the fates of millions. Through the availability of recently declassified records, ongoing scholarship, and revelatory, sometimes shocking, audio recordings, the actions and motives of Harry Truman, Dwight Eisenhower, John Kennedy, Lyndon Johnson, and Richard Nixon are laid bare, as are the complicated power struggles going on in South Vietnam during the autocratic, ruthless regime of No Ding Ziem and the succession of generals who followed him. Of particular focus for us were the fascinating political dynamics in Hanoi, where the familiar figure of Ho Chi Minh fought for supremacy with other less well-known but more powerful figures. Most important, we wanted to understand what the war was like on the battlefield and on the home front, and we wanted to find out why, as Marine veteran Carl Marlantis told us, Americans have been unable to have a civil conversation about one of the most consequential events in our history. 
he said. For, for years, nobody talked about Vietnam. We were friends with a young couple, and it was only after 12 years that the two wives were talking, we found out that we both had been Marines in Vietnam. Never said a word about it, never mentioned it. And the whole country was like that. It was so divisive. And it's like living in a family with an alcoholic father. Shh, we don't talk about that. Wars, all wars, create a kind of dissonance that obfuscates and deflects clear understanding. Vietnam is no different. To shed new light on such a complicated and unsettled time in our history, to struggle to comprehend the special dissonance that is the Vietnam War, we needed to look beyond the familiar stories Americans have told about the war and include as many different perspectives as our narrative could accommodate. Nearly 100 ordinary people agreed to share their stories with us on camera. Grunts and officers in the Army and Marines, prisoners of war, a fighter pilot and a helicopter crew chief, a Gold Star mother and the sister of a fallen soldier, a nurse, college students, reporters, protesters, military analysts, spies, and many others. To have been present as they bore witness to their experiences remains for us one of the enduring gifts of this project.